17-year-old Shavda Hussein thinks the world revolves around her. I love being a centre of attention. Um, I love it. And if I'm not centre of attention, I'll make myself centre of attention. Everything surrounding Sev is got to be about Sev. You know, she'd be quite selfish like that. It's going to be mad tonight, boy. Oh, my God. Coming from the mean streets of East London, she's learned to stick up for herself. She does like to put on the impression that she's kind of tough and hard, but then she is. Has a fight with that shopkeeper. Yeah, so did I. with an arsehole. <laughs> Everyone's got a guard up around here. Everyone. I had a fight in Wood Green. I had a fight in Finsley Park. I had a f Oh, everywhere, man. Did you, I can't remember half of them, to be honest. So I'm going to go wave it tonight. Sexy. With yeah. Sev, she talks the kind of gangster talk. Everyone come at your house, yeah. Bang, bang, yeah. It can be quite embarrassing if you just talk properly. People say my attitude stinks. By the end of the day, I love my attitude. It's who I am. Sev has dropped out of school without a single GCSE. School was shit. It was shit. Hate school. You've got no education, no nothing behind you. Nothing. I'm quite bothered, Mum, to, to hear it I again. I'm bothered because it you know just it's does the my truth. head in. When Sevda was still a baby, her father left and went home to Turkey. When it comes to my dad and things like that, obviously I got anger problems in it, and it's just made me think. Just lash out back at them. People lash out at you, lash out back at them. Now, hard-working single mum Joan is worried she's going nowhere fast. She just doesn't care. It, it, it's just really something shading over her. She just doesn't care. She just wants to do what she wants to do, and that's it. In the heart of Sussex, 17-year-old Andrew Harwood is loving the dropout lifestyle. <sighs> At the moment in my life, not much is going on. <laughs> Average day in my life. Wake up midday, after an hour or so, lying in bed, smoking a couple of drinks, head back to my girlfriend's house, start drinking, smoke, be up to like five in the morning. On average, that's a pretty good day. He doesn't do anything in the house. Andrew wouldn't pick a thing from the floor. If you look at the state of his room now, it's a disaster. Andrew, look at this. All right. Dirty underpants on the sofa. What the hell? Andrew's parents were well off, and he had a privileged upbringing. He had had a lot of good opportunities in his life. Uh, he had had the chance to experience amazing things around the world. I quite like the way I've been raised, to be honest. I, know that I, I wouldn't want to spend my life on a council flat. Andrew was a promising student but he blew his education. I can't even remember how many GCSEs I've got, like three or something. I basically wasted about 120 grand of my parents' money in private school. With all the pain in my heart, I got to say that I feel disappointed. Highly disappointed. But four years ago, when his parents separated, the privileges stopped. I got sent to a normal state school. You know, stereotype chav, as it were. There were thousands of them in school. Andrew still sees his dad, but his attitude towards his mum leaves a lot to be desired. Well, things have deteriorated. Andrew has been sometimes horrible. It's really upsetting, you know? This is a reflection of how messy your life is, honey. You don't see it. Yeah, it's my mum. It it's just a mess. In the end, I don't want to turn out like her or dad, you know? They both have their good parts, but they're both incredibly flawed. Thank you, mother. Mum Claudia worries Andrew has given up on himself. I'm just terrified. As a parent, I'm, I'm honestly I'm facing something that is frightening me. He, he's not going anywhere. Masses of potential wasted. To try and get their teenagers to do something positive with their lives, both mums have agreed to send them to live with strict parents in another country. Can you help yourself? <laughs> it would be rather nice to see him to actually realize his potential and to know that he can actually achieve so much more than he has. Listen, just say bye. <laughs> and be good, don't let us down. All right. Yeah. Mum's just hoping that she has a bit more respect for everybody and everything and gets good at the attitude and learn to appreciate me a bit more. Hi. Hi. I'm Sevda. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Nice. Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm <laughs> shitting myself. The teens will be travelling 5,000 miles to San Antonio, Texas to stay with the Frazies, a deeply religious conservative family. The role of God in our family life is central. We are very faith-based. 
Randy is pastor at the local mega church, while his wife Roseanne raises their children David and Austin. Eldest daughter Jennifer has left home but frequently visits. Hey dear God, thank you so much for our family. Thank you for tonight. The opportunity of getting together. Amen. Amen. The Frazies like to set an example to other families in the community. We're not just trying to be a family that's intact for the sake of our own family, but we have a broader community that's counting on us. Hey Mary. Hey Steve. One thing that's important that our kids do know is that we love them unconditionally. The Frazies operate a system of trust when it comes to their children's access to money and credit cards. I, this is my gas money that I spent on the credit card. So you use the credit card and you owe us money back? Yep. Okay, I appreciate you being honest about that, son. Mm -hmm. We have found that uh, trust is a principle that really has worked for us as, as parents. When our ch children prove to be trustworthy, we give them more freedoms. When they prove to be untrustworthy, we take those freedoms and privileges away. My parents are very understanding, and I strive to, I want to be like them when I grow older, because understanding what a child is going through is the hardest thing for a parent. In the house, Mom Roseanne is in charge. Austin, before Jen finishes, would you go wash a little bit, please? I think that part of loving your children is not uh, giving them everything they want, but by and large, the way we show that we love them is by setting guidelines and limits. If you finish the dishwasher, then we'll get dinner on the table quicker, okay? okay. I appreciate it. All of these rules and boundaries can produce a, a place of laughter, a place that's positive, <laughs> that it doesn't always have to be, you know, hard. After eight hours, the teens finally arrive in Texas. We're in Texas, you know. It's pretty stuck fucking up. stressful, I believe. No, because I'm really going to be like. But obviously, if they want to do, then obviously I'm going to show them what's what in it. So I did it, so I did it. What? Known as the buckle of the Bible Belt, Texas is one of the most conservative states in America. 77% of the population are Christian and attend one of the 11,000 churches. I feel like I'm in, like, surrounded by God. That's what I feel like. I feel like there's God everywhere. I laugh we get sent to one of those churches. The tiniest little church here and the biggest cross. It's like driving to hell. Oh my God, are we here? There she goes. They're coming. Uh -huh, look. Ah, oh. They're there. Oh my God. Home sweet home. Joke. <laughs> home sweet home. Oh my Christy God. I don't want to get out of the car now. I'm cry. Oh my God. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Welcome, guys. How are you? I'm so fine. I'm Rosie. Hello. And nice I'm, to meet I'm Randy. You. Hi, Randy. And we're the mom and dad Hi. of the family. Andrew. Nice to meet you. Andrew. Andrew, nice to meet you. First of all, welcome to Texas. Thank you very much. I'm going to you to my kids. This is our oldest daughter, uh, Jennifer. I like your hair. Oh, thank you. And we have David back here. He is our Hi. oldest son. Hello, David. David just graduated from Baylor University, magna cum laude. And then this is our youngest, Austin. He's just turned 18. For a matter of fact, he's uh, doing an internship at the Southwest Research Institute, which is uh, uh, basically a space center. Wow. And uh, we're glad to have you guys here. Well, it's going to be a fun time together. For the next seven days, the teens will be staying in the Frazies' immaculate mansion. We're going to show you around to the rest of the house. Obviously, the kitchen where we hang out most of the time. We're going to get some great food. Walk-in closets here. Oh, my days. Oh, shit. Uh, jacuzzi what? tubs and... Oh my god, this is proper nice. Uh, this is our outside living area right here. I think you're going to enjoy this. Wow. And, uh, we have a wonderful For the Frazies, 30 years of righteous hard work has reaped its rewards. Yes. These are books that I've written. Wow. And I've got more of them. Oh. And, uh, I am a, uh, a pastor, a minister yeah. of a mega church here in Texas. Mega church. So our church is 10,000 folks, and you're going to get a chance to experience that. I can't, uh, I can't do that. I'm, I'm not Christian. Yeah, that's okay. You don't have to be Christian. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't want to pray or anything. No, no, no. You don't yeah. have to do that. You just need to go. Okay. Can you each have your own room? And, uh, and so I'm going to take you, Sev, to your room back here. As Texans, the Frazies firmly believe in Southern hospitality. You have your own room and your own walk-in closet and your own private bathroom. Oh my God! Put your makeup. This is again our only upstairs room, and I think you'll like it. Oh my 
God. And that's a 62 inch a flat screen. We're not gonna let you watch a lot of television. <laughs> wow. I walk in, it's literally like a five star hotel. Yeah? And then you got the dad, he, look, he looked at me like that, like he thinks she can be a problem. I can see in his eyes, man. They've all got like such big qualifications, like all of them are going to like really massive colleges and schools. They've all got like, I don't know, it's just incredible. Like, you know, in England, the highest aspiration is like, you know, working at McDonald's or a Tesco is here. They're like being the top, like going to the top of what you can get to. Aren't you nervous at all? I have anxiety. Of course I'm nervous. Yeah, I've got, I've got anxiety as well. I think I've got anxiety anyway. Just, oh, I'm feeling really nervous. The fifth commandment states, honor thy mother and thy father. Hey, Andrew and Sevda, we're ready for you. The phrases expect the teens to agree to follow their rules. Now, because I'm a pastor of a large church, we have a unique position in the community, and so lots of families watch us. We've spent years building a reputation, and we'd like for you to help us maintain that. No swearing or bad language. And the reason is, is that we want our language to be uplifting. And, and so we'd really like for you to honor what we will do. Of course, of course. Okay. Mm. No drinking. Uh, again, uh, underage, you have to be 21 in Texas to be able to drink. And so it's, we can't have you do that. No smoking inside or outside the house. In Texas, if, unless you're over the age of 18, it's illegal. If you're going to look at any of them as the biggest of all, this next one is really it. It's not just lying, it's trust. Trust is the, is the ace for us. If you're trustworthy in our home, you get more privileges. If you prove to be untrustworthy, then you'll see that other side of us where for your sake, we're, we're buckling down, okay? Yeah. So we have an opportunity, your first opportunity to demonstrate trust to us trust. If there are things that you have in your possession that would sort of challenge or violate these rules, we're going to ask you in a moment to go get it and surrender it. And surrender it. Good. Okay. Yeah. You're dismissed. Come back. We'll be right here. All right. Oh, no. I have a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do it. I might. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give a couple like this. Oh, this is Man, it's just dawning on me the uh, enormity of the situation. No cigarettes, man. And I go through like a box a day easy. Considerably stricter than home. Like, considerably so, so. Yeah. Hey, Andrew. That's, that's, all, that's, all, that's all, all, all you have? have? I don't even have a box. So you don't have anything else in your suitcases or your nah. backpacks or your rooms? Oh, but yeah, cigarettes. Yeah, that's no. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. See me, yeah, I'm just wonderful. Got my lighter right here, got my fags hidden somewhere. <laughs> Ew, I'll never put them in the bin. Pardon? I'll never put them in the bin. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Okay. See my silly little signs? Clear in here. Randy is due to speak in church and the family will be joining him. As a figurehead in the community, he wants to make sure the teens will give the best possible reflection on his family. Yeah. On Saturday night I do a service, so you're going to get to go to work with me. Is that alright? Mm -hmm. The good behaviour would be obviously the language thing, so really watch that. Yeah, as long as I don't have to pray to Jesus or anything. No, no, no. Randy leaves ten minutes early to make the preparations for the big Saturday service. In front of a congregation of a thousand, he expects the teens to be presentable and on time. Sevda decides it's time to get changed. Sevda? Hello? It's about five minutes. Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm just getting dressed. Awesome. See you in a minute. For Andrew, the prospect of attending church is uncomfortable. I, I've got no problem with religion. It's the people who worship like those particular deities and religions. So it's the people I have a problem with. Septa, how long do you think it will take, sweetie? Oh my God. There we go. 
For image conscious Sevda, making the right first impression is everything. You're about to fall out of there. <laughs> you might want to bring something to throw over your shoulders. So what are you saying? I really think that you probably need to rethink wearing that particular top. If they don't want to look, they don't have to look. I'm not forcing them. I think that men are created very differently than us, and I think they can't help but look. However, I do want you to know that everyone is accepted at our church, so you can wear that if you would like. Yeah, of course. I'd, I'd love to wear this. I'm not complaining. You're the one who's okay. got an issue with it. Do you want to bring a shawl in case it gets cold? Yeah. Okay. If she knew how the gentleman would look at her, not just the young boys, but the older men, and how it would um, play out in their minds, she would not be happy with what they might be thinking. And that's a sad thing when sex and love are totally separated. Oh. The service has already been running for 10 minutes when the teens finally arrive. Covering up the chest, covering up the chest. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. It's all right. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. A mega church is a church with 2,000 or more regular worshippers, and Randy's is one of the largest in the United States. When you go in there, you'll find all different kinds of people in all different kinds of dress. You're not going to have to say anything. Let's go stand in the back for a minute. How's that? It's not that. It's oh. just I'm in a church. You are. Aww. Roseanne doesn't expect Sevda to pray, but she does expect her to behave herself. Everyone's welcome. Studies tell us that the greatest gift that you can give to your children is to demonstrate to your children love. I feel like I'm in a movie or something. I want to ask the Lord God that you give us a little bit of love. Let them understand the situation that you have been in. Say what? I used to go to church. I used to whisper in church. With the service over, the congregation gather to greet Randy and be introduced to the teens. Thank you for coming. Yes. Thanks for having us. <laughs> That's a Texas. Glad to see you. Howdy. Back home, Sevda is suspicious of strangers. You know what? I had those thoughts too before you got here. I kind of thought, what am I doing? Why are we introducing this drama into our lives, right? But you know what? It's not you really don't know how I'm feeling. You're going like, you know, you don't know. You really don't. The whole thing, I've just come over from England, yeah, to stay with family I don't know, yeah. And like, I've got to do all these things and that. It's like, uh, it's a lot, you know, you don't understand that. And plus, you've took my cigarettes away from me. Let's talk about it when we get home, okay? Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. Okay. I'd like, I'd like some time to myself as well for a cigarette. I need a cigarette. I need a cigarette. I need a cigarette. Well, how Sorry. about if we talk about that when we get home? Yeah, but, but there's no talking. I want a cigarette. To avoid making a scene, Roseanne takes Sevda straight home. Back at the house, Sevda's desperate for a smoke. And Roseanne is on her guard. There's a cigarette in there, I'm assuming. You're no, I need to, to go to Okay, okay. We have a bathroom right over here. I know. Okay. Sevda? No, Sevda? I need to tie Sevda? Get off me, okay. Bob. What are you doing? What are you doing? We have another bathroom. Why are you touching me for? We have another bathroom that you Why are you touching me for? We have another I'm going bathroom. home, Bob. <laughs> I'm going home. What? <laughs> I'm going home, Bob. Are you stupid? Fucking dog, man. I'm going home. Are you dumb? Shut up. about putting your hands on me? Are you stupid? Are you fucking stupid? Dickhead. Joe, don't film me, bruv. Seriously. No, why are you 
you coming here for? Go away. When you are ready Piss to off. talk like an Piss adult. Go until the then, away. I will be looking through Piss your off. bathroom. Go away. Room. Why are you here for? Go away. I don't like you. I'm not coming back in your house. That's that, innit? it? Bitch. The Frazies decide to give Sevda time to reflect on her behavior. This is just a lot of her attitude and, you know, you don't get my way. And so, out of love, we can outlast her. So I'm not going to go out and get her. And it could be a really cold night out there. Well, we'll watch her. Do you think I'm going back in that house? You must be crazy. I'm not going back in there. I'm not. Concerned that Sevda's rocking the boat, Andrew has a word. Your ass like you're so hard and shit. Get over it. What are you talking about? You, you're acting like some fucking prick. Why are you taking their side for? Went you on my side. Oh, I take it. I'm not taking their side. Yeah, you are. Face it. This is a fucking chance to set things right, and you've already screwed it up on the first day. You're gonna balls up your one chance to actually do something right. <laughs> Three hours later, Sevda has not returned to the house. Bitch, man, she makes me sick. I'd just like to order three large pizzas. Do you have a special involving those three? This is for delivery. The Frazies refuse to let Sevda ruin the family evening. Dad, what about you? You're like a kid, you know? Like, we're getting pizza and you're having none and you're sitting on a naughty step. <laughs> Skin. Here's your uh, pepperoni with pineapple. Inside the house, the family atmosphere is winning Andrew over. Excellent. I'm not going to give up just because they're rules. All right, awesome. We're still. <laughs> what is the cock there for? Go away, let me sleep. The Frazies are giving Andrew a whole new view on family life such a culture shock basically like you know coming from England you know, you know my parents are divorced and things like that and most parents and people I know are divorced whereas you know I've come here and they're like the happiest family in the world <laughs> and, like I, I can't even act like a dick towards them like I try but I can't they're just so nice Randy and Roseanne's strategy of leaving Sevda to stew has finally paid off I really don't want to walk back in this house, but you know it's got to be done. They're just so controlling and stubborn. Hello. Santa. Hi. Sorry. For what, Santa? What do you think you did wrong? I lost my temper. You did. I accept your apology. Let, let, let me, let me, I want you to look me in the eye, okay? You lost trust. We care about you. We are going to walk with you. And we expect for you to make mistakes mm -hmm. and, uh, and start over again. That's called forgiveness. The Frazee's calm and gentle approach seems to be having an effect on Sevda. I've been knocked over the coffee. I don't know why I do that. Because I can be so, so considerate and nice to people. But then, my, like my mum always says to me, that you got this stinking attitude. If that was me outside, back in London, I would have gone and got a bottle of vodka and just drunk my, drunk, drunk my sorrows away. That's what I would have done. But today, I actually, it was different. I had to go in, I had to talk to them because I wasn't going to give up. They wasn't going to give in, so it had to be done. It had to be done like that. First of all, I think there's a small victory, to believe it, uh, believe it or not, and the, the small victory is that we didn't give in and give her the cigarette. We think the cigarettes is a smaller issue than the role of authority in her life and uh, basically overpowering people. So I thought it went well. In the Frazee household, the day starts bright and early. Good. It's after seven and we kind of, we have things planned today so we've got to get up bud. Okay. At this time in the morning, Andrew would usually be getting in from a big night out. <coughs> time to normally get up, um, 
Well, I don't get up in the morning, so... The Frazies believe that in order to help yourself, you must first learn to help others. Today they have arranged for the teens to volunteer at a homeless shelter in San Antonio. We're going to go to a place called Haven for Hope. And what I need you to do, though, because I'm not going to be there, is uh, this is kind of a, a, a test of trust. Uh, what I need for you guys to do is to show up and to participate and to really make a contribution. Definitely, Definitely you're up for that? Yes. I think it's going to benefit both of them uh, to see that, oh my goodness, there is a way that people can be helped. It's so satisfying. Maybe the key to my life is not to be so focused on myself. Although only a fifth the size of London, San Antonio has the same number of homeless people living on its streets. Haven for Hope is a $100 million state-of-the-art shelter. It's the only one of its kind in the United States. So welcome to Prospect Courtyard. The teens will be supervised by project leader Susan Jenkins, who oversees volunteers and new residents. This is a facility where we bring people in that are uh, traditionally sleep under the bridge, out in the parks and such, and be able to give them a shower and a meal and keep them safe. We do not discriminate. So what that means is that there are individuals who have just gotten out of jail, and there are some, there are some dangerous individuals. So you do have to be careful. That's why we're, we uh, advise people for their jewelry and such when you come into Prospect Courtyard to put that all away. I'm a bit nervous now. Good. <laughs> Can you do it? Yeah. Yep. Okay, do it, all right? We're going to talk about this tonight at dinner. All right, man, get some water. How's it going today? Very good. You take everything off. It's metal. It'll go through my metal detector. Then you take your bandana off. Yep. The residents earn their place on campus by taking part in rehabilitation programs and working in the community. We're going to take you in the kitchen, and they're going to get you all ready to serve. It's lunchtime, and there are more than 800 people to feed. Okay. <laughs> I feel like a prick. I most likely look like a prick. While Sevda is in her element, Andrew is affronted by a lack of thanks for his hard work. It's weird, like they're getting food and they don't care. I don't mean to sound like a pop yeah. stuck up little dick, but it's so much you. you got you got your food yet? Once uh, you get into it, don't you feel like you're helping and you can uh, chill out a bit, you're being part of it. Well, I'm doing it because I, I have to, to that's it. It's just not my thing. Thank you. No After 20 minutes, Andrew has given up. They don't have anything in their eyes. There's no spark, there's no life. You can't see any hope. Everyone has that sort of spot. You can see it, that even a tiny glint in their eyes. They have nothing. A lot of what you see is fear. Other people are not going to do anything about it. That's why we're here. We have to channel what you feel into giving people hope. I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. I come from like, you know, an upper-class background. I've been in a private school in my life. Everyone I know, you know, Quite a lot of my friends, they make the wealthy people here seem <laughs> like commoners, you know? The amount of money I've been around, and yeah, I guess I've been fucking spoiled in that. My parents have given me a bit too much, but it, it just contrasts on such a fucking level that I, I just can't handle it, you know? With lunch service over, the Frazies arrive to pick up the teens. Everyone I met like, got along with them. Mm. Nah, it was not a problem at all. Oh, really? Yeah, they're proper nice. That's a good... Yeah. I love that. Andrew, how about you? You look like you're struggling a little bit. Today, like, full stop, like, everything I've been a bit, like... I don't know. Not been into it. I think you tried your best. I did it because I have to. Yeah. That's it. That's literally it. I'm doing it because I have to. Here it is. Okay, we're gonna get out some lunch. <laughs> Spread 
it around, man. Just spread it around. The Frazies believe that education and character development are critical to a young person's upbringing. Both teens have been failing at school back home. So this afternoon, the Frazies want them to start a self-improvement program to try and get them back on track. They'll be going to the Boys and Girls Club of America in nearby Bernie. Anybody got any questions about the rules here? Life? The Bernie Center is run by program director Diane Chase. We have a lot of kids here that are either on probation or have been in trouble, hanging out side by side with kids that are getting good grades and kids that are doing um, the things that they should be doing because it, it can do nothing but benefit them. Our focus all the way through is about personal responsibility, character development, basically learning how to be an adult and learning how to make positive life choices that will stick with you. Where are we going? Is that school, Bob? I want you to listen to me real carefully, okay? Both of you are smart and you know you're smart. We believe in you, yeah. do everything they ask you to do and wow them, right. impress them, okay? Hi, miss. Hi, Diane Chase. Who are you, babe? Pardon, what's your name? Diane. <laughs> it's okay. What's yours? Sevda. Say that again? Sevda. Sevda, that's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. Andrew, nice to meet you. Andrew, nice to meet you. The one rule that we have is we respect each other and we don't put each other down, whether we're dressed differently or talk differently. We try to avoid swearing. Everybody want to grab a seat for me? <laughs> Sevda got no qualifications at school. In year 12, her mum was issued a parenting order for her low attendance. Soon after, Sevda stopped going altogether. All right, so why don't we start with introductions? For the first stage in the course, Miss Chase wants the teens to get to know one another. All right, I'm Georgia. I'm 17, senior at um, Bernie High School. I like to ride horses and I want to be a doctor. So I'm a pretty good kid. <laughs> Listening to the ambitions and achievements of her new classmates is intimidating for Sevda. I like to play sports. I'm on the basketball team. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Basketball is my life. I have a senior at Bernie Champion. Keep talking. Accustomed to dealing with difficult teenagers, Miss Chase goes looking for Sevda. I just want to say that I feel a bit uncomfortable for these people. They're not really the kind of people I'd make friends with. How do you know that? Well, they're just not my kind of people. Well, I'm, I'm asking you to give them a chance the way that they're giving you a chance. Don't judge them. Give them the opportunity that they're giving you, okay? That's all I'm asking. But they're all together. They're all just all together, and I'm just they, here. Give them a chance, okay? okay it's not gonna hurt. Huh. I literally had a joint like that long in my hand. <laughs> and Andrew had a fortune spent on his oh, education, but he left school with only three GCSEs. School was something that didn't go particularly well for me. You know, my parents spent a lot of money on school, made a lot of effort, and kind of threw it back in their face. I've messed everything up, so <laughs> yeah, to be perfectly blunt and honest. Yeah, I've failed everything. During break time, students are encouraged to socialise outside the classroom. It was said for that was the quiet one. I wanted to hear more out of her, but um, Andrew, he's really talkative. He open, he was open and spoke was what was on his mind, and I liked that. It was, it was really, he was really cool. She seems cool. It's just I hope she, I wish she would like open up to us because I mean, I think she'd be cool to like talk to and hang out with. Sevda stays inside and tries to avoid the crowd. But new classmate Carlton makes an approach. You like art? Yeah, I just do it when I'm nervous and I'm like in a lesson I like to draw. So you like art? You're very stylish. You have a lot going for you. You like to party? A lot. So do I. You wanna know where I just got back from? I just got done five months in jail. Really? Yeah. My mom's an alcoholic. My dad, I don't know where he is. Uh, I've been to every school in this town because of moving. I've been through rough times. I just hate all of this. You don't want to do this? 
I just don't like school. I just don't do school. I say go for it. Despite Carlton's best efforts, the pressure of fitting in proves too much. Oh my God, I'm not staying here, boy. Oh. <laughs> Whilst Andrew settles in, Sevda sits out the rest of the afternoon. Back home, Roseanne wants to find out what's troubling her. When it comes to doing things, I can never follow through. You don't follow through? Never. Never? Do you not like that? I hate it, because so I couldn't do school. Because you would give up? Mm. I know you could do school. See, in order to get to be an executive and do some of the things that you dream about doing, you kind of have to prove yourself on paper, unfortunately. Mm. I've failed so many times like, in school and all that, so I'm kind of used to it now. That's why like, I'm here. I really want to try. You do. Mm. And it, it makes us feel bad when we fail about ourselves. Mm. But it doesn't change who we are, and we've got to love inside who we are and say, you know what? I can't do that, but I can do this. Yeah. You have so many things you can do. You are Sebda. You are funny. You are smart. You're clever. And that's who you are. And not, that's not up for grabs. <laughs> In the Frazee household, the family get together every day to bond over an evening meal. Randy has been keeping a close eye on the teen's progress so far. What I'm learning about them is a little bit about where they're from, and they're from polar opposites. They arrived at my house, I thought they were the same, and they're very, very different. We have two sauces. Do you yeah, want both? I think with Andrew, I was really surprised today he didn't make a little bit more progress. There's something about looking homelessness in the face, and I'm not sure why. It really angers him, it really unnerves him. For Sevda, you know, I'm learning that she is a part of a particular community. It's a community that you relate to and identify with the people in that community. You're tight with them, but once you go outside of that, uh, you have to be guarded because you can't trust them. It's the third day in Texas, and the teens are being sent back to the Boys and Girls Club. I know, Seb, that this is a challenge for you, okay? But I'm going to ask you to kind of, you know, lose all the attitude and uh, just go through the fire of this experience, and we'll be here two hours later to hear your success story, how you conquered this, not only for you, but for everybody who needs to know that they can get through a difficult situation. Can you give it a try for me? Yeah. You promise? All right, just dig down deep, girl, okay? All right, we'll be back to pick you up in a little bit. You shut up! Oh, ass. The day begins with a team building exercise. All right, so is everybody ready to roll? Basically, the simple explanation is you're going to the park to play games. The class head to the park. But when the games begin, Sevda doesn't want to play. Sean. I don't want to go over there. I'm not going over there. I just feel like, what am I sitting here with these people for? You want to come back and help me set up the room for the kids? All the art stuff? Okay. Sensing Sevda's lack of confidence, Miss Chase decides to get her to focus on the positive memories she has from school. Think of something that a teacher said that stuck with you. Yeah, I've got, I've got along with my old teachers in secondary school. They all loved me. And I feel like I've let my teachers down as well. I do know you can go back and talk to them. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to go back to my secondary school. But your teachers are right. The message you need to carry from them is that you've got potential. I'm just naturally paranoid. Like, I'm just paranoid all the time. Go back! <laughs> the rest of the class have completed the trust building games successfully. And Miss Chase sets her homework. Okay, so. The last phase of the project that we're working on is a challenge for you guys to map out where you are now and then where you see yourself going. And then I'll ask each one of you guys to present it in whatever way you're comfortable with. Miss Chase hopes her course will help Sevda address some of her insecurities. 
what she does is when that she projects the things that make her feel uncomfortable and the things that make her nervous and her self-esteem issues onto other people rather than take the chance that somehow she'll be vulnerable and that's what she doesn't want to be. Problems began when her father left the family home. She hasn't really got a relationship with her dad, she never did have. You know, he left her. Obviously, I've had opportunities to be in contact with him, but I just don't want to get hurt again and again and again. I mean, I, t I told her while we split up and, you know, what it was like while I was with him, and she said, oh, would you ever go back with him? I said, never. I've never had a father figure in my life, you know? So, boy. I always think if he was in my life, how would my life be? How would I be as a person, you know? Always think that. Time away from home has given Sevda the chance to reflect on how her father's absence has affected her. It makes me angry that my dad hasn't tried with me because it affects my relationships with people, that I can't trust people because I think they're going to walk out just like my dad did, like my parent. What if I just open up a bit and stop being so tight and just, like, closed? I need to stop that. I'm not going to let the fact that I didn't have a dad in my life hold me back. The Frazies often do charity outreach work. Tonight they are taking the teens to a soup kitchen in San Antonio. Randy has been concerned about Andrew's attitude since his outburst at the homeless shelter. Down deep, buddy. It's your story. Thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, man, I can't believe this. It's so depressing. Sensing Andrew's distress, Randy intervenes. Andrew, I want to introduce you to Melvin. Good to meet you. I'm I just from got the UK, I, man. Well, good to meet oh, you. The gloves? I don't have germs or nothing. <laughs> I got the cooties. I wanted you to meet Melvin. I just got yeah. to. I want you to tell him a little bit about your story. When I was where you come from, it's the same way. Homeless people, really? Yeah, yeah. you take a Hey, let me get a dollar. Man, get a, you know, get a job, bro. Yeah. Seriously, I'm, I'm in Manhattan, you know, Brooklyn, New York, yeah. working in nightclubs. Oh, excuse me, man, you got a dollar? Oh, man, what you gonna buy a dollar? What do you need a dollar? You gonna get drunk? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And you just look down at people, you know what I'm saying? But when you hit that level that they're on, there's no more looking down. It's yeah. like, wow, you know what? I got a whole newfound respect for all these individuals, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And it's for real. Definitely, man. That's Definitely. coming from straight from the heart. I never thought I'd be in a situation that I am right now. Yeah. You know? Now, I understand you completely. Dude. It's I good to meet you, man. Chatting with Melvin has given Andrew a whole lot to think about. This makes me realize how much of a little fucking trick I've been. Yeah. I've wasted everything. I've wasted so much money. The money I wasted on the school could pull these people a fucking house. If anything, this is the reason why you came here. You know what? That's what I love about you, man. You know? Because you, you love people. You know? How could this happen? Yeah. You're hopeless, almost like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Should have happened, man. Can you gut it up and head back? Uh, yeah, sure, if you get rid of it. Yeah. Feeling drained, but with new resolve, Andrew returns to serving. How you doing, Andrew? Very good. Very good. There you go, man. How are you? Your parents? Yeah, I'm glad I came down. It hasn't been a highlight, but it has at the same time. You know, it's strange how it's sort of planned out, but I figure I'm always going to keep a sort of memory of what, like, has been going on here. 
It's sort of stop it being so prejudiced and stop being such a just dick about it. It's changed my mind completely, you know. As a storm hits Texas, the teens head back to the Boys and Girls Club for the last time. Their assignment has been to create an art project that shows their life's journey. This is kind of the relaxing period of my life where I'm gonna retire. This means uh, like I'm, I'm finished and safe because I have the shield of wisdom and I'm hoping to go make my life story happen. Thank you. Simply being amongst new classmates has been a struggle for Sevda all week. Now she must present her life story to them. So this is really, it's a big, this big thing for me right now. Like you may not think, you may think it's just a small group of you. It's a really big thing for me. Okay, basically, I might seem intimidating, but deep down, I am a nice, soft person. So far, I've learned to be patient, hold my anger, stay cool. Things are easier to get through when you're just when you just keep the peace. But I've learned not to say I don't feel comfortable. Why is everyone staring? And I can't do it because it's pointless in the end. I feel proud because I actually you know, I find that I can do it. All right, there you go. I needed to open up. Um, about my life and stuff, just so I could actually change. First step, actually managing to finish something. <laughs> and was, get a certificate. Yeah. yeah. I, I ain't got a certificate for like three years. Same. That's a certificate, you know. Definitely the first step on the new road, you know. Yeah. Give me a hug. Oh. Mom and Dad's here. My mom and Dad's here. Get my T-shirt. Get my T-shirt. Get my T-shirt. Hi. Hi. No more school. You did it. I'm sorry to beat your home. I'm not letting you take you away from me now. She told us all about her life and her ambitions, and I was really proud of her. Way to go, Santa. Good job. What about our Andrew? Randy thinks Andrew will benefit from some quality father and son time. Hey, Bo. He wants to give him a real Texan experience and is taking him to a friend's shooting ranch. You have a little time to just uh, have fun and laugh and lose yourself in, in hanging out together. You really do still learn a lot and bond a lot and I think it takes bonding to have hard conversations. Yeah. I hit Got it. it! You hit it! You hit it! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> The Queen and Country. Paul! You did it again! You did it again! <laughs> yeah, it yeah. beats video games, right? Yeah, this beats, beats video, video games, games any day. Andy! I'm back, baby! I'm back! <laughs> I'm back! Should we do one last shell each? Alright, we'll do one more. Awesome. That, that was, was awesome. good, man. Before they leave the ranch, Randy wants to find out what Andrew's learned about himself during his stay in Texas. I've heard you say several times I've squandered my opportunities. That almost a sense of I've really failed up to this point. Yeah, I realize I've been failing like my parents. And I mean, they themselves have said it's always their fault. They haven't failed me at all. And I've been failing not only myself, but them. They've given me everything and I've given them nothing. I've literally seen them like, you know, on their knees, crying in tears, begging for me to change. I've thought to, I've just walked off, been like, fuck off, you're just being over the top. Yeah. My dad's getting old and he, I want to be able to make something of myself. One, so he can, because I've never quite seen my dad actually, you know, truly be proud. And I want to be able to pay him back. I, th I think one piece of advice I might give you is that it's all about the opportunity to be forgiven and starting fresh again. And I can promise you that's, that no matter what you think about your dad in all these years, from the perspective 
of a dad. I can tell you, he's waiting for his son to come home. Usually I'm fairly good with words, but I don't really have much to say other than just, just thank you. You're welcome, man. That was awesome, man. Yeah. The time has come for the teens to leave Texas and return to their own families. We will miss you guys. It's been an honor to have you in our home. And we want you to live life to the fullest with everything you have in you, okay? All right. I think it began with enormous apprehension. It ended with a tremendous amount of hope and a sense of accomplishment. I think for all parties involved. And uh, we have found at the end of the week, the number one thing we can say is we fell in love with two kids from England. Bye, Dad. Bye, Bye, Bye They're a wonderful family. Lovely, lovely people. They've got so much love in their heart. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. I'm going to help my mom around the house more. I'm going to respect my mom more. I'm most looking forward to going to college just to get things back working. I love you guys. I love you too. The Frazee family has been the nicest people I've ever met. In fact, they are, you know. Bye! Bye! I'm hoping that mum is going to be surprised. I can show that I have changed and that I can make life a lot easier for her, you know. I just hope that he actually come back with a sense of achieving something. But I want to see him motivated and excited about things. Because after all, I think one of the purpose of this was to help him with his self-esteem. <laughs> oh, to be home. Now that I'm back, I'm definitely gonna be more helpful, you know, like, it's not actually that much of a problem. I was just whining and bitching about it because I just couldn't be bothered. This is so wonderful. I see a change. I see another Andrew. I, I, I cannot tell you how happy I feel. I do owe Randy and his family, like, everything now, you know, just like I owe you and Dad. You needed this, and, oh, God, I'm so grateful. You don't know how much you love me. I just cannot describe how happy I feel to see him like this, and humble. And I really hope it is the making of Andrew. I really, really hope so. I just really hope she's come back and learnt to open her eyes a bit, drop this barrier, give people a chance, get rid of this chip on her shoulder and this bad attitude, knuckle down and just sort out her education. Hey, Mum. Hey, Mum. Hey, Mum. Welcome back. Hey, Mum. Oh. 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 I had a thing with saying, I don't feel comfortable, I don't like it, I don't feel comfortable. Like when I went to school, I was like, I don't feel comfortable. But in the end, I just thought, you know what, like if, if I can do this, I can really do anything. And it really challenged me. I'm sorry for my attitude. I need to stop being so self-centred. Because it's just holding me back, man. You get me? I believe she's got the capability to do anything she wants to do. Just really hope now that this is going to prove that she can do it, because I know she can do it. I've left my London attitude in Texas and I've brought my Texas attitude back with me. I'm really proud of you and I really... Oh, I missed you. I'm really proud of you.